What's going on everybody? Today's video, the same exact 101 Super Fractor pulled by two different breakers, both that have been around for a long time frame. I can tell you I've never heard anything bad talked about either, especially real breaks. Real breaks was started off as a Facebook group for a long time. I think they're still breaking on Facebook, but they use other platforms, maybe their own website now. They were one of the few for years before COVID that would drop case after case after case. Snap fill, snap fill, snap fill. You never see anything like it. There was no fillers, no nothing ever ran. The other breaker, filth bomb breaks. Been around for a while. As to, uh, been around for a while as well. Wow. Stuttering there. Um, both pulled the same exact super fractor. You know, there's been a lot of blunders that have come out over the past year with Fanatics Tops. Wrong stickers. Um, <laughs> some didn't look like the person's autograph. All kind of stuff we could sit there and name out. A lot of promises have been made by that company. They would have less of a print run. Yeah, right. Less parallels. Yep, not happening. You know, you can keep going on and on and on. What was promised to the collectors has not even come true. And now we got two one ones out there. One of my questions for you guys in the comments is going to be this. Because now we know there's two one one super fractors. So it's kind of basically it's two, you know, out there. Does that devalue the price onto this if this guy becomes big? Or, you know, is somebody going to want to get both of them to put in their collection and makes it one of those rare errors out there? Because you know, years ago, I want to say it was 2016, we had something similar happen with this, with Panini. And by no means am I calling Panini perfect out there. You know, we've seen a lot of bad stuff over the past, I don't know, what did we say about, with Panini, probably about since, what, 2020 maybe? A lot of blunders. Uh, Fanatics is just having a lot. And with the day and age of social media... It's just shown a lot more than what it would have been, you know, in 2015, 16, 2010, so on. Because then you rely more on word of the mouth, message boards, how many people actually were on a message board, and such. You really notice there's been one company that really kind of stays out of it all. Upper Deck. I got it. They only have uh, hockey. They do a lot of the marble and stuff. But I will tell you. You don't hear a lot of bad talk ever about Upper Deck. I mean, I've had great um, customer service with their representatives calling in online um, on the different issues of old expired redemptions that were in there, you know, or older redemptions I was waiting three, five years for. I mean, you have to when it's like a LeBron auto, stuff like that. And they've always hooked it up, made it worth my while Threw in extra, you know, stuff like that there. I could never really speak bad about Upper Deck onto it. I mean, a lot of their cards grade better. Look at the Young Guns. Um, look at SP Authentic. Even their thicker cards seem not to have all these print lines and garbage we see coming out from Fanatics and Panini. But this is really not about Upper Deck. It's about having two one ones out there and having another... I guess you could say mark onto their resume that's kind of going to be negative out there in a way for the hobby because it makes you wonder how many others are out there. It's going to be two one on ones of a card. Are we going to start seeing multiple two out of fives, two out of tens, you know, stuff like that there? Not unheard of. It's definitely happened in the past. But I thought this was kind of interesting. It was sent to me earlier, like I was uh, talking earlier. You know, it brings up a lot of different questions onto it. Now, a lot of people ask, have you bought anything from Fanatic since they switched over? No, I haven't bought any product. You know, would I buy an auto that I like of Nolan Ryan out of a newer product? Yeah. Wouldn't buy, you know, their boxes or nothing. I, I just see too much going wrong for the value, the overpriced for the higher produced cards out there. And even looking at uh, stuff like Dynasty, you know, I think with certain products, i.e. Dynasty, you should be rotating who your players are. I got all your active, you know, players that are still in league sign every year. But your Hall of Famers and your veterans, I would rotate who's in each year just to drive it like, oh, man, we haven't seen, you know, 
Nolan Ryan signs everything, but I'm going to use like Ricky Henderson. Um, trying to think of some of the other ones, Jeter, or Ichiro, rotating them around so that you know, okay, well, this year, maybe in Dynasty, they're not going to have Ichiro autos, but, you know, in Diamond Icons, they do. Hey, it's just some of my thought process. It'd make it a little more rare trying to do the chase. I got it. It brings product value down and stuff like that there, but it also makes it somewhat more reasonable. I don't know. Just thoughts I was always having in my head that you could always rotate stuff around instead of seeing, like, every single product in football having a John Elway auto in it, you know? Or a really, really limited, like how they did Tom Brady. To me, just different things like that makes and drives the product more. But let me know what you guys think about this here. Two one-on-ones, two oh, respectable breakers. I can speak really highly of real breaks. I've dealt with Filth Bomb before, never had any issues with them. I've never heard anything bad about either of them off of anybody talking. Um, let me know what you guys think. And then also, now having two one-on-ones, does it make it less value? Or is it going to be something like, ooh, it's a big blunder. i got to get them both, and it drives both prices up. All right, guys, that's it. Talk to you next time. Stay safe.